Hey everybody, welcome back to Off The Grid Tiny House. We're on day three of our 50 day challenge. If you wanna learn more about that, check out our intro video. In our last episode, we prepped the trailer with our anchor bolts, flashing, and jacks. In this episode, we're gonna be building the subfloor framing. And that's gonna support the floor of the tiny house as well as hold the subfloor plumbing and insulation. Many tiny house builders don't even build a subfloor. They put insulation between the framing members of the trailer and just attach the subfloor to the top of the metal framing. I decided against this for several reasons. First, metal is an extremely good conductor of heat. So even if you put insulation between the trailer framing members, they will still conduct a lot of heat out of the floor of the house and you will have cold floors. Second, if you're going to have plumbing, you would need to place it underneath the trailer frame. It could get damaged there when you move the trailer and it would be difficult to prevent insects and rodents from entering the house where the plumbing extends below. I highly recommend you avoid both of these potential problems by building a subfloor. As you can see here, the subfloor creates an area where we can install our subfloor plumbing and subfloor insulation. The subfloor will be nailed to the top of this framing and create a nice flat solid base for the rest of the tiny house. Let's take a quick overview of what we hope to accomplish today. The subfloor framing starts with the sill plate and the sill plate is part of the house that attaches the house to the foundation. For our tiny house, that means it will attach the subfloor framing to the trailer. In a house with a concrete foundation, pressure treated wood is used for sill plates. However, pressure treated wood can react with metal and cause corrosion. So we're just using regular two x four Douglas fir sill plates. The type of wood you use isn't extremely important, but Doug fir is a very popular framing lumber here in California. We could also use spruce, pine, other types of furs, etc. The anchor bolts will secure the sill plates to the trailer with nuts and washers. On top of the sill plates, we will be installing a second layer of two x four sill plates. On top of the two layers of sill plates, we will attach rim joists, which are the two x eight lumber you see here. The floor joists are the two x eight lumber that runs between the rim joists and will support the subfloor, which we will be installing in episode five. Normally, the floor joists run between the rim joists every two feet along the entire length of the trailer. However, you'll notice that I framed out an opening right here. The reason for this will be covered in our next episode on plumbing, so don't worry about it too much right now. When you frame out an opening like that, you need to double the joists here because they'll be supporting the load from these four shorter floor joists. Then the floor joists on either end of that joist need to be doubled as well because they're carrying that increased load as well. First, I glued some expanded polystyrene insulation over the top of the flashing. This will be covered in more detail in episode five when we go over the subfloor insulation, but it was much easier to install now before the subfloor framing goes on. The sill plates are important because they create a strong attachment for the anchor bolts. To install the sill plates, I measured the front length of the trailer up to the fender, cut a two x four to fit, and placed it on the trailer just above the holes that I drilled for the anchor bolts. You can notice here in the mornings, this gets a lot of condensation right here. And we wanna keep moisture away from the wood as much as possible. So what I'm doing is just tacking this on, this piece of foam onto the bottom. And what that's gonna do is just protect the wood from that moisture. And we'll put that on everywhere the wood is close to the trailer, whether it's by the fender or anywhere around the bottom. Maybe I left it a little bit long on this side and we'll fold that up because it is close to the fender there. Using my speed square, I transferred the location of the anchor hole to the sill plate. I used the same 9 16th drill bit from the last episode to drill holes in the sill plate for the anchor bolts. Then I attached the anchor bolts and checked to see if the sill plate had a nice fit. Sometimes I was a bit off and I had to make my holes a little bit bigger so I could position the sill plate so it was flush with the edge of the trailer frame. It's okay to do this because once the nuts and washers are tightened down good, the sill plate won't move. Hey guys, I spend my time and money making these videos for you because I wanna give you the confidence and knowledge for you to build your own tiny house. In return, I'd really appreciate it if you could pause this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and visit our Patreon page. Your support ensures that you'll see more awesome videos like this one. If you do start building your own tiny house, you can use the links in the description below to purchase your tools and supplies, and that also helps out the channel. 
I repeated the process of cutting, drilling, and checking for fit around the perimeter of the trailer until the first layer of sill plates was all cut and drilled. For the next layer, I started with the end of the trailer so that the end ran long, whereas on the first layer, the sides ran long. This staggering effect will provide more strength. The second layer is only necessary because I want the subfloor framing to reach just over the top of the fenders of the trailer. That way, the subfloor will go over the top of the fenders and I won't have to worry about them. Next, I measured and cut a 2x8 rim joist the same length as the first sill plate. The rim joists make a nice flat nailing surface around the perimeter of the trailer and also create a nailing surface to attach the floor joists in between them. At this point, it is really important to locate the crown of the joist. Wood will nearly always have a crown, so if you look down a piece of lumber, you'll see it either dip in the middle or dip at the ends. The effect is very subtle, and it might take some practice to see it, but installing the joist with the crown up will make it much more solid subfloor. So I sighted down either side of the rim joist to spot the crown and nailed it to the second layer of sill plates. And then I placed the rim joist and sill plate together over the top of the first layer of sill plates and reattached the anchor bolts. Again, I repeated this process as I worked my way around the perimeter of the trailer. Once I was sure everything fit nicely, I nailed the rim joist together and started cutting the floor joist to fit between them. I used the floor joist span tables in the building code to help me decide the spacing for my floor joist. Here you can see that with 2x8 number 2 Douglas fir spaced every 24 inches, I have an allowable span of 11 feet 8 inches. This is more than I need, but that just means the floor of my tiny house will be that much stronger and less bouncy. The doubled floor joist in the middle requires metal joist hangers because there's no sill plate underneath it for support. With the subfloor framing all in place, I used an impact driver to get the nuts super tight on each end of the anchor bolts to make sure the subfloor framing was securely fastened to the trailer. I also added some metal hardware between the rim joists and sill plates for additional strength. For every episode, I want to take some time to talk about some of the setbacks and struggles I faced. If you're building your own tiny house, you will definitely be facing your own setbacks and struggles. And I want to make sure you're prepared for them and you don't let them get you down. You know, don't beat yourself up over it. Just take a step back, figure out how to solve it, try something, um, look at some videos online and, and solve the problem and don't beat yourself up. You know, it doesn't mean that you're not a good builder just part of the process. Just in this episode, uh, I forgot to double the floor joists on, um, on the sides and I had to go back and redo that. So, you know, it's frustrating, but it happens and just be prepared to take care of it. Always remember, anyone can build their own tiny house. If you're passionate about it and you're resilient enough to get past the struggles and your fear of failure, and uh, these setbacks that you're going to face along the way. Those are the only two things it takes. You can do it. In our next episode, we'll be installing the subfloor plumbing of the tiny house. The plumbing is responsible for supplying fresh water to the tiny house as well as removing the wastewater. I hope you'll be able to join us as we install the plumbing. Mm -hmm.